Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today. Um, we're gonna get started in a minute. If you are already here, we would love to have you type into the chat who you are, um, what organization you're representing today, and uh, we'll get started in a minute. Hello, this is Mara. Sarah, can you enable the chat? Um, it should be enabled. Let me check. Do you see chat on your screen, Mara? I do see a chat on my screen. I'll put in there. Okay. People are putting into the um, Q&A who they are. Well, for now, I think it's fine if we use the Q&A, and if you can... Uh, yeah, I think I enabled it, so if someone wants to okay. test, um, it should hopefully be working now, but we'll get started. All righty. Um, all righty. Oh, I see something coming through. Yay, excellent. Okay, well, welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this year's first uh, Getting Started webinar for Richland Gives. Um, just so you all know, this webinar is going to be recorded and it will be added to the toolkit on the Richland Gives website. Um, if you have any questions during the presentation, you can, of course, use the Q&A. Um, we'll try to get to them as we go through, or we will, of course, reach them at the end as well. Um, so we'll get started. And thanks, everyone, for helping figure out the chat. It looks like you're all coming through, so it's great. Um, alrighty, so again, welcome. I'm Sarah. I'm a project manager with Mighty Cause, and we are the platform provider for Richland Gives. Um, we are also joined by Mara today uh, from the Richland County Foundation, so I'll pass it over to you, Mara, and you can say hello. Thank you, Sarah. Good afternoon to everybody, and I want to thank you for attending this webinar and for registering for Richland Gives. After last year's event, uh, we sent out a survey, and we took your feedback to heart, uh, which is why we have restructured the grant prizes for this year. One of those new prizes you're already entered for by attending this webinar, and for each webinar you attend, you'll get your name tossed into the hat for a possible chance to win a $500 grant. So we now have three leaderboard categories, and that was based on feedback from you. So the small nonprofit leaderboard is for those with operating budgets under $100,000. The medium nonprofit leaderboard is for those with operating budgets between $100,000 and $500,000. And the prize for large nonprofits is based on those with operating budgets over $500,000. I'm so excited. This is the eighth year for Richland Gives. The Richland County Foundation hosts it. Uh, we do this to build capacity, grow philanthropy, and to make our community strong. Since its inception in 2015, you have raised over $1.9 million. So this year, hopefully, we are able to go over the $2 million mark. And it will take all of our effort and enthusiasm to make this the best Richland Gives ever. And I want to thank uh, the donors of the Richland County Foundation for making grant prizes in the amount of $100,000 available to you for your hard work. Uh, that goes to participating organizations beyond what you raise 
online during Richland Gives. All of the new prizes will be posted very soon on richlandgives.org. And so now I would like to say thank you and turn it back over to Sarah. Excellent. Um, well, we are super excited to be here with you all again. Um, if you are brand new to kind of Mighty Cause or your first time participant in Richland Gives, um, just really briefly, we are a fully functional organization fundraising suite. So organizations can use Mighty Cause every day of the year to raise money for their causes. Um, we've been around for a while, since 2006. So we were one of the first platforms to host Giving Days and we really, really enjoy working on them. Um, and helping you all out and trying to get you some more money for your awesome causes. So let's get started. Um, alrighty, so our agenda, we're gonna be going over the basics, of course, for Richland Gives. Um, then we'll talk uh, through how to kind of customize your organization page on the platform. And then this year is a little different. We're gonna be doing a live demo. I'll be walking you through an organization page Kind of an example where to find different reports retention reports how to edit your you know donation form all that good stuff um, and then we'll finish with a q a session so if you have any questions you can send them through uh, the q a um, and we will work through them as they come so i'm going to pass it back to mara so you can cover the basics okay well i'm not going to read that slide to you you can uh, see all the particulars that you need to know one I would like to highlight, and it happens every year, somebody has a donor give too early. So the early giving starts at 7 a.m. on November 14th. Another big uh, change this year is we are going to do the leaderboard watch party in conjunction with the Richland Area Chamber of Commerce, uh, their business after hours. So it will be on the traditional day. It will be Tuesday, November 29th from 5 to 7. It will be at the Mid-Ohio Educational Center. And we are going to try to put the word party back into the leaderboard watch party title. So we are not going to have the presentation like we did during COVID and uh, the year after COVID, if you want to say last year was the year after. So we're going to have a party with the DJ. Uh, the food, you know, uh, beverages. We'll also have text to give this year, and I will email you additional information about this. But basically, you can have donors text RG22 to a special number, which I will post in the nonprofit toolkit. Um, also, during the leaderboard watch party, we're going to have an extra special golden ticket hour. Uh, between six and seven o'clock to encourage giving by the people attending the leaderboard watch party. And we will announce the amount of that prize uh, during the leaderboard watch party. We will also have eight random pool prizes worth $250 each. Um, if you raise at least $1,000 before November 28th, you will be entered into that drawing. And another new prize this year will be a prize for bringing a poster for display during the leaderboard watch party. And the size of that poster will be one that can fit on your typical easel size. I will also get dimensions of that. But if you bring a poster to the party, uh, you will be entered into a random drawing for a $250 prize. So um, as I said earlier, we will announce all the prizes and post them pretty soon. Uh, Sarah and I have been working on those. So uh, it's going to be a very um, fun, exciting, and profitable for you, Richland Gives. So back to you, Sarah. Sounds good. Um, all righty. So really briefly, what is a giving day if you're brand new to Richland Gives um, or you have never participated in the giving day before? It's basically an online fundraising marathon. So we're trying to bring together just a bunch of people all at the same time to support a specific community um, space. Uh, so the Giving Day hosts, in this case, Richland County Foundation. They are working hard to organize the event and rally all of you amazing organizations to raise funds for your causes. Um, they're working hard, you know, spreading the word, talking about it. Uh, and then the organizations you all participating in the giving day are going to use the resources and tools that we provide to you to reach out to your supporters, to solicit donations, um, kind of secure fundraisers, secure matching grants, and just work on growing your network during this big event. 
Um, basically, how do Giving Days work? And just as we noted, the Giving Day is a unique campaign presented by our host organization. Um, it provides you an opportunity to really capitalize on the urgency of the limited time frame. So in this case, we have, you know, the full day, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. to raise the most money for your cause, plus that wonderful early giving period. Um, and using these, this urgency is going to really encourage donors to all give at once um, and hopefully get you to the point where you're winning prizes as well during the event. Um, Moving into what you need to do. So to participate, you'll need to customize your profile on the Richland Give site and start planning for your campaign. Um, once your page is all set up, you can start to invite people involved with your organization to participate, either through you know, sharing links or just peer-to-peer -peer fundraising um, or just donating. You can also start to secure matching grants for your event planning. Um, and plan your outreach strategies. So we'll be going over kind of more of this very much in depth in the next webinar. Um, different email strategies you can use, different social media strategies to try to extend your reach as best you can. Um, and then of course, once early giving has started on November 14th, you can start promoting your campaign, encourage donations to start to come in. And then you'll wanna save kind of the biggest push, the biggest ask for all your donors to give on the actual giving day on November 29th so you can try to win some prizes. Um, and of course, if you have not registered yet and you are tuning in, make sure you register so you can participate. Um, okay, so this is me transitioning into, um, I'm going to stop screen share for a moment and switch over to the organization page so you can kind of see this demo. A lot of moving pieces. Okay, so hopefully you all can see this now. We're on the Richland Gives website. Um, so basically what you're gonna do first, you are gonna need to navigate to your organization page. So if you've already registered, maybe you can't remember how to log in, um, how to find your page, you're gonna wanna always come to the Richland Gives website first. Um, and then of course there's that lovely login button at the top right. You can log in with Google or Facebook or the email that you provided when you signed up or registered your organization. You will need to be approved as an administrator for your organization before you are able to log into your organization page. So that means either, you know, if you're a first year participant or you've never used Mighty Cause before, you'll want to get your page set up. Um, our Mighty Cause support team will be approving administrator requests, um, kind of verifying, making sure everything looks checks out right. Uh, but if you are involved in an organization that's already participated, you can either go ahead and log in or an administrator who is already an administrator of your page can add you directly through the organization so you don't need to get, you know, Medicaid approval. Um, but once you're logged in, you will be brought to your overview screen. Um, you can see within your uh, drop down menu, you'll be able, you, I can see obviously much more stuff as I'm logged in under Medicaid. But you'll have a drop down window and it'll show you um, your actual organization page. So this is your dashboard. It's going to be pretty much where your all of your activity is happening. Once you're registered for Richland Gives, you'll see it on this kind of overview page. It'll say your organization is registered for Richland Gives. Um, if you're waiting or pending approval, it'll say that as well. Um, and then you have just a bunch of really great metrics available to you. You can customize these metrics. Um, each administrator can public can kind of customize the own metrics on their own display screen, which is really nice. So if you have someone who's more, uh, you know, working with volunteers or finances, they can customize the data that they want to see in front of them. Um, so we also have your to do list here, which is nice. You can see what's been completed, what uh, is recommended, different kind of things that we encourage you to set up. EFT is always recommended. Um, and then, of course, you have your dashboard all along the left hand side. This is your overview screen. Your organization page is the face of your organization. It also offers you a nice tutorial if you've never been through. Um, you can see fundraising tools, reports, um, checkouts, all the good stuff that you need access to. And it's pretty straightforward. So just spend some time kind of like clicking around and making sure that everything looks good. 
Uh, but we're going to get started with your organization page first. And it loves on this demo page to always offer me a tutorial. <laughs> Um, alrighty, so we're going to get into this. Uh, like I said, the organization page is the face of your organization, face of your giving day. You're going to make sure it looks good and represents your uh, organization well. It's very, very customizable. You can see edit mode here. You can see that things pop up and show you what's editable. Um, space for your logo is here. Uh, you can customize your logo. So basically it's a one to one ratio, which is pretty fairly standard for all of your social media sites as well. So you can upload um, an image and then kind of crop it, move it around, click save, click done. Uh, you can also add a background kind of banner image. Um, you can also do the same thing. You can recrop, adjust. We also have a gallery of images available to you if you're like, I do not have time for this. Um, you can select kind of something that looks familiar or good with your organization page and go from there. Um, it's nice that you can also add a color overlay. So if you wanted to kind of add like a different kind of color overlay or keep it on brand, you can do that as well. Um, and then one thing to note, this URL up here is the URL for your organization page. And it's what you're going to want to share when you send out newsletters or if you have a Facebook link to your, or your Richland Gives page. Um, you'll know you're in the right place because it'll, instead of saying your giving day, it's going to say Richland Gives and then your organization name. Um, and then moving along, you have the name of your display, this, the display name for your organization. So this does not have to be the exact same name, uh, your legal name. If you go by something else and people know you as something else, you can totally adjust. Um, and it lets you know this does not affect your organization's legal name. So you can edit that. Um, we also have your donate button, which is where people will click when they want to make a donation. We have a match tile. If you have a match that's live, it'll be reflected here. Um, so people know that you have a match live. If you are doing and encouraging peer to peer fundraising, that's what your fundraise button is going to go to. Um, they can click fundraise and they'll be prompted to start a fundraiser specifically for your organization. So they can go through and get started and it's super easy and very straightforward. Um, you can also decide to hide the fundraise button, just toggle this little switch on and off if you decide that you no longer want the fundraise button for whatever reason. Um, and then share this organization is where people will go if they want to share to either email or Facebook or any other social media, um, they can click that. Uh, and then, of course, your metrics bar is here, so you'll want to update this to reflect the start date for early giving. So you'll want to, you can obviously see there's amount raised, number of donors. You can decide if you do or don't want to show any of this data. Um, you can also opt to include any offline donations in your total. Um, and you'll want to click here and just set the date for, excuse me, for November 14th. Um, and here is where you're going to click to edit your goal. So whatever your campaign goal is for this year's event, you can edit that. Um, moving right along, we have your about section. This is what you're going to want to really kind of explain to donors, tell your story, tell all about what you're fundraising for this year. Get excited if you have videos, if you have photos, you can add all of that. Videos can be inserted via a link, so you'll have to first upload it to either Vimeo or YouTube. Um, and then you can copy paste that link in here and then it will directly embed into the section. Um, you can, of course, also add images, um, any links if you need links or any sort. So it's very, very easy to edit. It's all on page editing. So you can uh, edit right here and then just click save when you're done. Um, and then one thing I always like to mention is that you might be designing on desktop and Mighty Cause is incredibly mobile friendly, but it's always a good idea when you're done kind of designing your page to pull it up on your phone and just see if everything looks good. Um, if this wraps appropriately or if you need to kind of drag and drop things in different areas so that it reflects well. Um, a lot more, more and more people are donating via online. Um, sorry, not online, mobile device. So you'll want to make sure that this looks very, very nice uh, for those who are opting for that online donation via mobile. Um, and then, of course, there's also much more rich editing if you want tables or any emojis and stuff like that. 
Um, one new kind of cool thing is a custom tab. So every organization page comes with one additional custom tab that you can fill out in whatever way you want. If you want the about page to be all about your organization, but then you want your custom tab to be all about your Rich Then Gives campaign goals, you could do that. Um, you could also add information about your staff, whatever kind of relevant information is specifically kind of something you would want donors uh, to be able to see. So that's a cool new thing. Um, and of course, you can see that we've added kind of sample images and stuff like that. You can also feature campaigns, which is really nice. So if you have peer to peer fundraising and you're really working hard to get peer to peer fundraising happening, um, you can add to feature campaigns. So you can search for anyone fundraising uh, for you and add it here. Um, you can also remove any out of date campaigns. You just click the little trash can and you can remove them. Um, we also have a list of campaigns supporting this organization. So you can see all your peer to peer fundraisers here, which is really convenient. You can add a media gallery. Um, you can link your Instagram gallery and you can link your Facebook gallery too, which is super cool. Uh, it all is connected, which is kind of nice. People can see that you're active on socials uh, if that's important to you. Um, and then also a matches section. So if you have matches that are live, uh, this section is available to you. People can see kind of more full details on what's going on and click into it. And then, of course, your organization data section um, has just all of your organization data. So anything that you need to edit, your phone number, if you have an updated email address you need to add, um, your specific website outside of Richland Gives you can add, social media links. Um, there's just like a bunch of different content here that you can fill out. Um, so if you have any questions on that, you can send them through. But I'm going to keep moving on towards um, the specific, uh, I think I'm going to go into social media, how to edit it. So you can, uh, like I was saying, so when someone were to click, if someone were to click share this organization, you can edit what they see. So within settings and then uh, general settings, you can edit and configure um, your do, 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 social sharing settings. So some people might have out of date information. So this is a good little section to check on. We always have people who uh, email into support and say it's saying 2021. I don't understand. That's probably because in your social sharing settings, you haven't updated it. Um, so you can add a tart card title, a description. Um, any social hashtags that your organization uses, uh, you can add that here as well. Um, so take some time kind of customizing, customizing your entire organization page. This is definitely probably, if not the most important section, uh, there's a bunch of important sections, but this is definitely like one that you're going to want to spend some time in. Make sure your background image doesn't clash too much with your logo. Um, if you have a bunch of text in here, it's going to get a little confusing. So we like to always encourage for just really strong images um, and stuff like that. Um, so we're going to move into your checkout flow. Um, Sarah, that can I can be ask you a question before you leave yeah. this page. If, sure. you, if you fill out the custom tab, how does that yes. appear on your live page or does someone have to click that in order to read it? Um, so it'll be just like this. It'll have two little uh, scrolly kind of bars. And the default on that is the about page. Yes, it's always going to default to the about page. So then you can, uh, you can't custom name the about. About is always going to be about, but you can customize the tab for um, like if you want this to be like mission or something like that. Thank you. And if you don't want it, you can always remove. Um, alrighty, so we're going to head over to the checkout flow. You can find your entire kind of checkout information under checkout. Um, we're going to go to your donation form. Uh, but you also have access to thank you page and donation receipt, which we'll touch on in a minute. Um, so I was saying your organization page is one of the most important sections. I would say your donation form is also one of the most important sections. Um, so this is what your actual donors are going to see, and it's completely customizable, which is really nice. Um, you can see there's an edit mode, so you can see exactly on here what your donor will see. 
um, if any sections aren't filled out, for instance, let me see, um, like this type of stuff, when it actually is on edit, off edit mode, it'll disappear. So you can get an idea of what people will actually be seeing. Um, and then of course, uh, I mentioned you can share the direct link in your URL to your organization page. You can also copy a direct donate link. So if you have a um, call to action, a button in your email that goes out that says donate, you'll want to make that super easy. Send them, copy this link, copy your direct donate link. It'll come up with your donate form rather than sending uh, the person to your page to then also have them have a next step to click donate. So. You'll be using probably those two links most often. Um, so your donate form is totally kind of customizable. You can set up suggested donation amounts. You can add descriptions to help tie those amounts to any items or services your organization provides. For example, in this one, we have $40 funding 10 pounds of dog food and 100 donation helping uh, transport rescue dogs. So each of these kind of set amounts and uh, examples of what it kind of services are really important because these descriptions are going to help strengthen your appeal to donors and help give them an idea of what their dollars are actually able to kind of cover for you all. Um, it's also helpful because if someone's coming here and doesn't know exactly how much they were thinking of giving, this can definitely help kind of give them a better idea. Um, also, if someone was coming and was like, well, I just probably am going to donate 10 bucks and then they saw, oh my gosh, I can transport rescue dogs. That's awesome. Uh, that might pique their interest and they would be happy to donate $100. So kind of think about what each of these um, can do. You can also add additional ones. Um, you don't, you're not limited at four. Uh, we do recommend sticking between about four to six because too many options can get too overwhelming for donors. Um, so kind of keeping it very clear and easy for them. Um, you can also opt into collecting any additional info you might need from donors. Uh, Mighty Cause is automatically going to collect email and address information for you, but you can also add other kind of information if you want. Um, you can add one additional in the add a section. You can add one additional kind of question if you have the need. If you're like, we would love to know X, you can add one additional question um, here as well. Uh, and then all of this information, once the donor has clicked submit and paid, uh, will be available to you in your donation report. So if you did add an extra question and you're looking for that data, you just need to download a full donation report and you can see all of those answers within it. Um, I was showing you, you can edit on and off the toggle mode, um, which is really convenient. Uh, but that's pretty much it. You can see exactly it's really it's really convenient to be able to just see everything right in real time. Um, you can see kind of the payment methods, uh, fees, um, and what everything looks like. Sarah, can you review the payment methods because we now have, I think, Apple Pay and Venmo. Yes, yeah. So we have. I'm trying to remember. We have enabled Apple Pay um, and Venmo, PayPal. So if someone has Apple Pay and is on an iPhone type of Apple device, then, and they have enabled Apple Pay, that option will only come up for those people who have Apple, Apple Pay. It's not gonna come up for everybody. Um, and then we also have, of course, credit card. Um, we have, uh, I believe, pay by bank account um, as well. And then, um, what's the other one? Yes, PayPal and Venmo is really nice. Um, I actually, that's pretty new, paying by Venmo, which is really cool. It offers you like a QR kind of code. I tested it the other day. It's really awesome. It's very, very easy. Um, I think that's everything, Mara. Am I forgetting one? Well, the, the ACH uh, pay by bank account, um, Park National Bank offers that because it has to be integrated with the Plaid app. Yes. Mechanics is not offering that integration. And then it seems to me, and Sarah, you can correct me, but it's the larger banks that can connect the ACH, such as Chase Bank would be a good example. Yes. Yeah. Larger banks are usually all partner with Plaid. Um, so we partner with Plaid to do this. It's all super secure. Um, if you have specific questions about security, you can email our support team and they can kind of fill you in on the details. But that's all um, kind of like a 
secure third party that we use. Um, and most ev kind of events are using Plaid. Um, so it's very secure. You don't have to worry. Uh, but yeah, larger banks, some smaller banks, you might have to check with your bank. If you're, if you wish to see your bank kind of using Plaid, then that's something that you should talk to your bank about because they are the ones that have to get added uh, via Plaid. Work directly with them to get added. Um, let's see. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the checkout kind of flow and we'll head over to the thank you page. Um, again, fully customizable. You can preview exactly what you're seeing. Um, this is where you're going to go to set up your thank you page, let donors know that you super appreciate them in every way that you can. Um, we have an example here where we've added a video. So if you want to get all of your staff together and just shout thank you or something like that, um, that stuff goes a long way to making your donors feel really appreciated and seen. Um, and then, of course, you can add a call to action so you can direct them either wherever you would like. So if you want to send them to an email newsletter, sign up. Um, this is what's going to show up as soon as they click donate. They'll be shown this screen um, and then you can take them wherever you would like. Um, donation receipt. So if you go to checkout you can go to donation receipt, we also have drop down menu here. Um, same thing with the donation receipt. You can send a test receipt to yourself. Um, you can customize the message uh, a little bit more. There's a code view if you have someone who is fluent with code. Um, but very easy. This is what's going to show up on the Richling Gives receipt. So Richling Gives, when they make a donation, will get sent an automatic receipt via uh, the platform. Um, you do not have to send any receipts. If someone is requesting a resend of the receipt, just let our support team know and we can resend them receipts. Um, we've tried to take that off of your shoulders. Uh, but Richland Gives will be sending out its own receipt and then your little blurb here will be within the receipt as well. So that's the tax deductible receipt that they're being sent. Um, all right, so it goes uh the donation window and then they'll get the thank you message and then in their email they'll get this just so that you understand the flow of it all um any questions yet mara i haven't been looking i've been monitoring i haven't seen any questions yet but please great <laughs> hopefully it's all making sense and if anyone has questions you can send them through um, all right, so we're going to go into your donations and disbursement section. This is your reporting section. Um, so you can see in your reports, you have a bunch of different uh, information available to you. So we have five areas. We have your all donations. Um, we have recurring donations, offline donations, retention report, and your disbursements. Obviously, you don't have adjustments. Uh, this is just for my own login. Um, but your donation report is available to you in real time and includes all the information that you have opted to collect, like your donor name, um, email, donation amount, any questions that you've added. Um, we'll go in here and you can kind of see what the flow looks like. Uh, all the data is not here. It's kind of just a little snapshot. So if you're wondering why something isn't showing, you're going to want to download the full report to get all columns of data. Um, your donation period is always going to default to the last 30 days. So if these numbers here are not looking or right to you, it's probably because your time period isn't set properly. Um, so you can always go in and add a custom date range if you need to see it outside of a certain period. Um, it also will only show you up to a year. So if you need data outside of a year, you're going to want to download multiple reports. So you download, you know, last year's data, the year before that all separately. Um, let's see, I think that's it for donations. You can also add offline donations here, but I'll talk about offline donations in a second. Um, you can also filter by recurring donations, online donations, offline donations, anything that's been refunded potentially. Um, you can also view by a fundraiser, a team, an event. If you want, you can also view specifically by the Richland Gives giving event. So you can filter here and then select the year um, Richland Gives 2021, uh, and you can pull all of that data as well. Um, back to reports, we're going to go to your disbursements section. Uh, obviously, this is a uh, fake account, so we don't have disbursements. Uh, but this is where you would go to see all your disbursement history. You can click on a specific disbursement listing to open up more information about that disbursement. 
Um, you can see which donations were included in that report, as well as a summary of the total amount, total associated any fees, or the net amount included in the disbursement. Um, and all donations made on the site are processed by the Mighty Cause Foundation. So we are a donor advised fund. This means um, kind of that we are re, re sending out the money that you, your donors have said they want to give to you. Um, and then all donations on the site are, uh, where am I? Yeah, all donations are processed by us. Um, your organization can sign up for an electronic fund transfer, so you can set up EFT, which I was showing you in your to-do list. If you click here, it'll bring you to the EFT settings. Um, and then we send out, also we can send disbursements via check. So those get sent out once a month. EFT, you're going to get disbursements twice a month. Um, uh, so it's, it's, it's in your best interest to set up EFT if you're able. We, we do have a $5 check fee um, if you do. Uh, opt for checks. So just something to think about. Sarah, um, we have a couple questions. Sure. Um, one question is, if a donation is given offline, for example, a check, and then entered into your dashboard, can the donor receive a receipt thank you through the platform? Um, they should be able to, yes. Okay. That yeah, that's a good question though. I'm, uh, let me see. Um, I don't have, I'm trying to see if there's an example. Uh, that's a good question. Let me check and see if they want to add their email and then I can um, email them and see. Typically when you're adding offline donations, this is all internal. So it's not necessarily sending an email actually, you're adding the information yourself. So the email is optional. Um, and I don't know off the top of my head if they're getting a receipt because it's not operating the same way as an online donation is automatically sending receipts. Okay, well, we'll get that information. The Another question is about the text to give. Uh, so in the text to give, you will text uh, the words or the code RG22, and you will text it to a number. And that number is 844-844-6844. And what that does is that will take the donors to the Richland Gives uh, site, you know, where all the nonprofits are listed. And so I want to incorporate that during the leaderboard watch party to encourage people attending the party to give while they're at that party, and also to give a nonprofit the chance to win the uh, super secret extra special golden ticket that will be offered between six and seven. And I think we might have one more question. Let me see. Is there an option where donors can share on their social that they donated? Um, that's a good question. So we, I have seen other giving events, um, like other organizations create little stickers like on Canva. Um, we don't have like, the function to do that within the platform, but that's definitely something that you can add to like a receipt that I was showing you. Um, where is it? Where was I? On your thank you page, you could totally create um, kind of a little like sticker, so to speak, an icon that says, I gave to, you know, your organization, and then they could, you could leave instructions that says like, right click and save this image and share on your socials. So there are clever ways to get that. Okay, and I already have a sticker per se uh, created for Richland Gives that says I donated and it's the oh, Richland perfect. Gives logo. So mm -hmm. I can share that in the um, media section of the nonprofit toolkit. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Um, let's see. That's all the questions so far, I think. Let me double check one more time. Oh, okay. If we've already set up an EFT from previous years and there are no changes, do we need to set up the EFT again? No, you should be good. 
Okay. All right, so I'll go into retention reports. Um, so another incredible feature is our retention report, which is really useful if you have previously participated in Richland Gives. Um, this is a section that's going to allow you to export your list of retained and unretained donors um, so that you can send them emails and kind of curate uh, an email specifically to them. So basically you'd be like, hey, you gave last year to our event, our campaign, like would you give again? Um, so at the top of your retention report, you're able to filter and create the type of retention port that you need. Um, so you can see status retained, not retained, um, and you can also select the time period. So you can select last year's event and see who's not retained so far, um, which is super convenient. Uh, then you can download the full report uh, and you can email them. This email button is going to open up your kind of computer email if you have like whatever connected to here. Um, but I would just download the full report and then you would have access to all the email addresses so that you can kind of pull that into MailChimp or whatever um, email system you're using. But this will be really good this year to kind of uh, reach out to people, keep an eye and see who has donated again during your campaign this year. So kind of visit here throughout the early giving period because um, people who have gave again, who have previously given, are definitely going to be a key group of people you'll want to ask to give again. Um, we're going to head to your offline donations I mentioned. Um, so one of, of course, the most important aspects of online fundraising is not just online donations, but also how you're kind of doing offline, your offline successes. Um, so to add an offline donation, you're going to select just add offline donation up here. Um, and then you can add all of the details. Uh, you can, the key identifiers, the starred stuff is going to be um, critical. You have to include this or else it's not going to save amount, source, stuff like that. Um, you can also add the donation date so you can backdate it if needed. Um, if you forget to add one during the event or so to speak, you can add that. Uh, and then you can hide name from public display if they wanted to be anonymous. So then you'd click complete donation um, and it would add here. One thing to note is that once you've added an offline donation, you cannot then go re-edit the offline donation. So if you realized, oh, I added an extra zero to the amount, you would have to just click delete and then you would just re-add the offline donation. Um, very, very straightforward. Um, once again, you can sort by time period. Uh, you can sort by the campaign type by giving event. If you needed to see all offline donations from last year's event, you could totally do that as well. Um, alrighty, so we are going to move into, do, 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 I think we're going to move into your fundraising tools. There's a ton of information uh, on matching grants. I feel like matching grants are always kind of a trickier uh, segment. So if anyone thinks of anything or has questions, uh, I will answer them, of course. But if you have anything coming later, just talk to our support team, uh, support at mightycause.com. They're incredibly useful when it comes to matching grants. If you have like kind of numbers not lining up or you're wondering why things aren't reflecting properly, they can help you figure out like what the issue is. Um, so matching grants, like I said, we'll go into more detail next webinar, uh, kind of all about strategy and how to secure matching grants and stuff like that. But so far, you can kind of take a look, start looking around if you've never used it. You can go to your match manager. Um, you can see what it looks like to create a new match. Uh, just kind of explore. Um, it's very useful. Um, but this is something that your organization is going to secure and set up on your own. So it's basically a sum of money that is going to help drive and encourage others donations by offering it up as a match. Um, so our matching grants tool, it's going to allow you to display a matching grant that you've worked to secure on your page, like I showed you on the beginning, um, that little kind of next to the donate button. When you have a live match, it gets a little sticker and it says match uh, active, match live. Um, but our tool is super versatile. There's lots of options for how you can set it up. Most matches I see are definitely one-to-one. -one, so if you donate $10, you're going to get $10 matched. Um, but we also have the ability to do two-to-one, three-to-one. You can match a certain percentage of a donation if you only want to match half of a donation. Um, if you want to match up to a maximum dollar amount, so say you have you know $1,000 for your match, you don't want it to get eaten up too quickly. You want to be able to encourage a lot of people to be able to take advantage of the match. Um, everyone wants a little piece of the pie, so to speak. 
Um, but you can add, you can match up to say like, say you only want to match up to $100 of each donation. So you're willing to match 100% up to $100. So if someone donates um, $500, you're willing to match $100 of their uh, donation. So that's a pretty cool one. Um, look around and see when you're talking and trying to secure a match with somebody, these are good things to be able to explain to them, to give them options. You can work with your grantor and be like, here's what we can do. Like, what, what, how do you envision this match being used? Um, perhaps they have other conditions that they're interested in. Um, set a minimum per donation before the match is applied. You can opt to include any offline donations. If you're like, no, these are all online only, you would turn that off. Um, you can also opt to include the peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers that are fundraising for you. So if somebody makes a donation to a peer-to-peer -peer page, the match would also apply to their donation. Or you could also apply match once per donor. There's just a ton of kind of different variables here that you can work with your grantor to figure out. You can add a photo. Um, you can hide their name publicly. You can add their name. Um, there's just a lot of kind of cool tools here. Uh, you can also queue your grants to begin immediately after another grant. Um, just a note on this, when you are setting up the match, you're going to want to kind of consider how your grantor is going to fulfill the match. So we have two options. They can fulfill the match either online as an online payment, or they can fulfill the match as an offline. Say they give you a check at the end of the event and they're like, once the match is met, just add this check. Um, so that's something to consider. Um, this little button offers sometimes a bunch of confusion to people, so I just want to clarify. Usually, um, so in a nutshell, this is going to show you real-time page metrics. So if someone donates $10, your page metrics, just your organization page, are going to show 20. So it'll automatically add the match value into the page metrics, um, which is really nice. Uh, the only thing you're going to want to do is that before your um, donor pays, you're going to want to uh, go in and unclick this either right before the match ends or within the matching grants section. Um, you can also hide the visibility. So basically what you don't want to happen is to have the match um, be double counted because if you have the uh, if you're showing these metrics and then you leave it on, you've already added the match value to your organization page metrics. So when someone goes to pay the match, it's then going to also add that amount. So if you have $1,000 um, already from the match that's been reflected, but now the grantor needs to go in and they need to pay the match, you're going to want to just kind of toggle this and hide it from the page totals so that it takes away that kind of fake money, we call it. And then the real money can get added, so you'll have the match value reflected only once. Same thing uh, with offline donations. You'll just probably want to make sure. So if you're seeing way too much money reflected on your page, it's probably because you've left the uh, match showing in your organization totals. So if you do have questions, you can let me know or you can uh, ask our support team and they can always help you figure this out. Um, let's see, where else am I? Uh, another thing to note that once your match has been closed, you cannot reopen your match. So you can see here, these are all past matches, they're closed, there is no button to edit. So if something is kind of wacky, not looking right, um, you just want to make sure you're double triple checking yourself. Um, you can potentially delete an old match and then recreate it and backdate it. Uh, but I know nobody ever wants to probably deal with that. So just make sure everything's looking correct. If you can have somebody kind of follow behind you and check uh, your work, that'd be really helpful. Um, I'm going to go into settings now and I'll show you a couple different things here. So we have disbursement settings, which is where you would set up your EFT, um, check your address and stuff like that for checks. Uh, organization info, you can edit general settings and admins. Um, so if you are on your organization page and you have new admins you need to add, you just go here and you can add them yourself so long as you're already an admin. Um, you can approve like other admins as well. Um, and then, so it's super straightforward. 
Um, we also have your general settings, which I briefly showed. This is where you would be able to edit your social sharing. Um, if you have alternate search names, you can add those. Uh, discoverability, you probably don't want to turn this off. It means that you're hidden from the Richland Gives page. Uh, if you want, you can customize your URL that is up here. So if you have one that doesn't look right anymore, um, mostly if you're new, if you've been using your page for a while, you probably don't want to edit your custom URL. But if you're brand new, you're welcome to edit that. Um, and then what else is here? Uh, let me go over here. Organization info. This is your kind of legal address, your IRS information. Um, if you have a new name, you need to upload kind of documentation here. This is all a bit more higher level stuff, so I don't want to overwhelm anybody. Um, but this is all stuff available to you, so you can kind of look around. And then the last thing I want to show you before we get into our Q&A at the very end uh, is a cool widget. So we have extra fundraising tools available to you. So within your fundraising tools, um, we have widgets. And there are, I believe, three to choose from. So these are little widgets that you can add and embed on other websites. So if you have a website that you use regularly, um, you only use Richland Gives during the event period, you can come here and you can pull a widget. Um, there's mini donation form, which is gonna look like this adorable little donation form with your kind of amounts that you have. Um, we also have just a solid donate button. Um, and then we have a thumbnail to get the donor to your page. Um, so basically this is gonna be really useful for you if you know that your donors are gonna be coming to your website during Richland Gives and maybe they miss the memo to come to your organization page for Richland Gives. Um, you can add a donut but donut, a donate button to your website. And when they click this, that's going to bring them to your donate form so that you're capturing all those donations that might end up on a different kind of platform, I guess. So you're going to need to have all your donations on the Richland Gives site to be able to count for prizes and stuff like that. So this is something that's very useful and good to think about, um, including on your regular website if you're worried that people might miss that memo. And then it shows you the code. So if once you kind of pick your donate widget style that you prefer, um, you can generate a code. Um, let's see. Um, donate. You can generate the code, and then uh, someone can copy and paste this into your website wherever you would like it. Um, I think that that's everything at this point. I am going to stop screen share unless anyone has questions on any of this. Um, we'll head back to the last slide that I have. So Sarah, you redid the uh, nonprofit toolkit this year, and you included uh, a lot of easy to access links that go to video tutorials. So yeah. if you have questions, obviously, we encourage you to call Mighty Cause or email them at tech support, but there's an awful lot of information in the nonprofit toolkit. And then also new this year, Besides the nonprofit toolkit, we added a donor toolkit. Um, just give an overview uh, to donors if they have questions. Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. So we have uh, just a ton of information in the nonprofit toolkit um, timelines. Uh, Mara said that she's going to add the little I gave button kind of uh, sticker, so to speak. Um, and then the donor toolkit is really useful if you are going to be encouraging peer to peer fundraising this year um, and you're sending out emails to try to get people excited, link them to the donor toolkit on Richland Gives. It gives them all this information about how to peer to peer fundraise, um, stuff like that. So that'll be really useful. Um, we also have two other webinars. So we have a strategy webinar, which we're going to talk all about matches, um, social media, way more in depth email strategy. Um, and then at the very, very end of the event, December 6th, we have a very quick post event wrap up webinar. Um, it'll probably only be about 30 minutes. It'll be kind of a close of the loop type of webinar. Um, we'll talk about different thank you strategies, how to continue using the Richland Gives platform outside of Richland Gives, um, how you can keep kind of keep the momentum up with your donors outside of the event. Um, and then of course, if you need anything, Richland Gives, Mighty Cause, we are here to help you. Um, we have an incredible support library. 
available to you as well that's in the nonprofit toolkit. So if you're looking for something uh, specific, like how to set up EFT, you can search for that. Um, of course, you can also email our support team. Um, and these are their hours that they are operating. Oops. Uh, but that's it for me. Um, Mara, do you have anything you want to add? We'll wait for some questions to come in. Um, no, just that we plan on posting the prizes. And one of them, another new prize this year is for peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers. So if you can encourage volunteers, uh, family members, friends to set up fundraisers on your behalf, uh, that would be an additional $750 grant prize to the top. Well, it's going to be a random full prize for the top fundraiser. So uh, another exciting new prize. I feel like peer-to-peer -peer fundraising and the matching grants is where we have opportunity to grow. Um, so we'll have those posted. Sarah, I think maybe within a week or so, we'll put those prizes up. Yes, definitely. Okay, someone just asked if that includes Facebook fundraisers. No, it only includes if they set up a fundraising page underneath your organization page. So when you go to your organization page, you'll notice there is a donate button and a fundraise button. So if a person, uh, for example, a volunteer went to your organization page on Richland Gives and clicked the fundraise button, it will prompt them through setting up their own page on your behalf. And the beauty of this is they share it with their friends and family and coworkers, people who you may have no information on. Um, and this prize, just to be clear, is for fundraisers set up by people, not, not staff of your organization. So they would have to be outside of your organization. Yep, and it's really easy to set up. Like Mara was saying, there's um, the fundraise button. So you can just share your organization page and any emails that go out, um, encouraging people to set up peer-to-peer, -peer. just tell them to click fundraise. And it's super straightforward. I do not see any more questions in the chat or the Q&A. Okay, great. Um, well, if anyone can think of any questions, you're welcome to reach out to supports. Um, and thank you for spending your part of your afternoon with us. We appreciate it. Um, and I'll be posting this recording to the toolkit next. So thank you, everyone.